I'm really pessimistic. I don't think there is a good outcome in 2016. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with Congressman Thomas Massey, a Republican from Kentucky. Congressman Massey, thanks for talking to us. Hey, thanks for having me, Nick. We are at the International Students for Liberty Conference. Uh, tell us, what are the most important votes that are coming up for a libertarian-leaning Republican between now and the 2016 election? I think we can force some votes on the privacy issue. I've been able to force about four votes. In fact, last year and the year before, I forced a vote on an appropriations bill to shut down government uh, forcing companies to install back doors in their products. Now, that amendment was attached to an appropriations bill that got thrown away and then an omnibus was later done. But it's important to get the votes because then you can see where the congressmen stand. What did you think about in a recent uh, Republican candidates debate, all of the existing candidates were like, Apple should unlock that phone and just be done with it. Uh, how do you feel about that? <laughs> well, I'm sad. I mean, now that Rand's out of the race, the libertarian voice is gone. And I think it's also untethered some of those candidates to become more neocon-ish. In 2016, what are the prospects for growing the number of congressmen and senators who, like yourself, are serious about shrinking the size, scope, and spending of government? The real question for me, or my goal now, or my mission in life is, when the good guys get elected, is trying to keep them from becoming zombies when they get to D.C. Because, you know, we get probably 12 to 20 guys every cycle that you know, they run on what they believe and they believe what they run on and then they get there and they sell out within about six months. What are, what are the ways that you uh, either keep them from selling out or, or becoming zombified? What, what, what kind of, is it education? Is it support? Is it what? Congressmen get led to a place they never want to go and then they find themselves there and they find themselves trying to argue that that's the right position. And so if you can explain to them how they're gonna get led in those directions, how they're going to get whipped into voting for things they never intended to vote for. If you can, it's almost sort of like a dating manual for adolescents. Like when this happens and you feel uncomfortable, there's a reason you feel uncomfortable. Just, you know, you, they sort of need that dating manual <laughs> when they get there so they don't end up in places they don't want to be. Uh, in terms of the presidential race, what's the best outcome uh, that you're hoping for in, in 2016? I'm really pessimistic. I don't think there is a good outcome in 2016. So I, mean, the, I, I would say the, the one argument for libertarians to vote Republican that still remains is the Supreme Court nominees. Uh, other than that, I really can't see very much endearing for a libertarian in these Republican candidates. So, yeah, I mean, you're not going to support uh, or you're not going to endorse anybody before the election or will you vote for the eventual Republican nominee? I'm not going to endorse any of the remaining candidates, and in Kentucky, I'm going to vote for Rand because he's still on the ballot, and um, you know we'll just wait and see what happens in November. Uh, what uh, as a, you know we're at the Students for Liberty conference. What was the most important issue to you in your student days, and is it still a big deal for you? And if not, what has replaced it? You know, my gateway issue into liberty was gun rights because I grew up in a rural area where everybody had guns. And then I went to college and realized it, you know, that people in college wanted to ban these things. I went to college in Massachusetts. Um, and so that was sort of my gateway issue into, uh, into the liberty movement. And as I and thought through that, I was able to think through these other and, issues. And the gun issue, uh, I mean, over the past 20, 30 years is actually Second Amendment rights have really seen an enormous increase in uh, their legal standing as well as their popularity in, in many ways, don't you think? The, the gun rights movement or political effort is probably something everybody should study because they're fighting above their weight class. And when, when I was young, if you wanted to carry a concealed weapon, you had to be a sheriff's deputy. I mean, it was virtually unheard of to be able to do that. And now you can do that in most, most states with you know, minimal uh, hoops to jump through. Uh, you know, in 1994, they banned so-called assault weapons and we all thought, and high capacity magazines, we thought we'd never see those again. And here we are, they're the most popular firearm in the United States. And, and crime and gun related crime and violence is down. So That's important, yeah. yeah. Every state that has made these changes or municipality to, to be more liberal, if you will, in terms of letting people own guns, uh, mm. they've seen a reduction in crime. Mm. Uh, what makes you pessimistic these days and what makes you optimistic? 
I guess I'm most pessimistic about the national debt and the fact that when interest rates return to normal levels, 5% uh, interest on $20 trillion is a trillion dollars a year. That's bigger than our military budget. It's actually our entire discretionary spending combined. And that's, I mean, we're spending about $4 trillion a year. So if it goes up to that, that's 25% off the top is just going to pay money we don't have. Well, if the $4 trillion, three of that is for entitlements. There's, only, there's a trillion that funds the things that people think about, like roads and bridges, uh, you know, NASA, uh, the military. That trillion will wipe out all of the things that Congress actually votes on because I don't see any will to change the um, entitlement programs right now. So then what makes you optimistic? What makes me optimistic is technology and invention and the human spirit to improve our own lives. Uh, you know, I'm, my background is an engineer, I have 29 patents, I've invented things, and when people say, will our children be better off than we were, I say, well, absolutely they will, because society doesn't forget the things it invented, and we invent more things. And so, you know, we've got smartphones now, and we've got eBay, and, and things that have really made life better for us, thanks to technology. And so when people say, are we going to be better off, I say, yes, but it's going to be due to the engineers, not the politicians. Well, we will leave it there. Thank you so much. Uh, we've been talking with Congressman Thomas Massey from Kentucky. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie at the International Students for Liberty Conference.